Welcome to the Bet US Soccer Channel. I'm Flash, and this is your home for soccer betting. And it's La Liga, and it's match day 21. Well, throw the balls up in the air, and let's see how they land. But first of all, we'd like you to subscribe because we're America's favourite sports book, and also we'd like you to ring the bell, which means we'll notify you, and you'll never miss any content. Again, if you're on social media, follow at Bet US TV. There's a link in the description. Press that with no geographical restriction. And then, obviously, we'll have records, we'll have chat, and we'll have a Q&A at the end. But with this show, we're going to cover nearly every single game, and we might even cover some for next week. There's that much content for you today. Now, I've got Pavlos, who goes through corners, blood baths. He's just found out that a referee is going to be refereeing in the game where he wanted a card-happy referee. So all the stars seem to be aligned. And on the other side, it's Barcelona's number one and favourite son, who's basically having La Liga to himself because there's so many good teams that are absolutely killing us. Um, first of all, Pavlos, a smile on your face because you've just found out that the referee you wanted is the referee you've got. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if actually it's not La Oz, it's Villanueva. No, so no. Villanueva... Ah, oh, misinformation. First up, let's Hello. get off to a great start. I rectified start, let's. just before the show started. You didn't hear me. El is in the VAR and Villanueva is on the pitch. Oh, that's all right. Laos and VAR is just as good. There'll be VAR for throw-ins. Give them cards. Give them cards. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Pavlos is on cards. Um, Roman, so we've got eight games uh, this week. And uh, listen, there's a few funny lines, to be honest. There's a few lines and you're looking at going, why are they sucking me in? Yeah, there's some tempting ones, but uh, seeing how things are going lately in La Liga, you just can't really trust too much. So it's sometimes a bit harder to, to find the value. You know, you, you want to bet on the big teams. You think it's an easy game. That was happened to me uh, last weekend. It seemed like it was going to be uh, a winner, but then in the end, uh, they deceive you. And this is happening. So I have to be very careful with these tricky matches and, and get it right this time. Yeah, Barca man, Danny Lopez, and Rick. Uh, listen, all welcome in the chat. Make sure you, and well, we know you've got a great opinion, so let's uh, let's share it. Uh, let's let's kick on then. Oh no, records first. Records. Let's have a little look. Not great viewing, but it's early on. Uh, Six point eight two for me. Pavlos is uh, up three point seven five. La Liga low down nine point two eight, but we blame uh, Paco. Uh, La Liga, pro the props are zero point zero three. We haven't had a prop for a while. Maybe we have to go for that. So it was at twelve point three two. So a couple of good weeks, and we will be fine. Um, so as I say, we've got eight games. This is the way we're going to do it. So we're not here all week. Yes, I'm going to find out who's got the pick, and I'm going to go to them first, and then it's up to us to disagree, agree, or just pass on it. So the first game up, please. El Maria hosts Batiste. Batiste scored three last week at home. Remember, the goal line was only two in that game. And we ended up having seven. And Batiste came away with nothing. El Maria at plus 190. Batiste at plus 150. The draws at plus 230. I think this game starts at 1-1. That is why the, car, uh, the numbers is set at 2.5. With the over 2.5 at plus 105. Uh, Pavlos. Almeria Batiste is your game. I wanted to be with Batiste just because they helped us with our banker. But can they be trusted on the road? No, they can't be trusted on the road. Uh, they're very edgy, very uh, fidgety on the road. They get a lot of cards on the road. They get many red cards on the road. I can't remember how many bets they ruined us by pick when we picked them uh, on a money line or even on a pick em on the road. And they somehow find ways to lose and destroy our bets. Now they're, host they're hosted by Almeria. Uh, and uh, Betis, you know, all after the restart, after the, the World Cup break, they have been uh, struggling, to say the least. Um, they have three wins in uh, about seven matches, I believe. Yes, they did have a couple of matches uh, in the Super Cup. Um, it was uh, not a very tough schedule, to, to be honest. But um, if you decode what they did uh, in the Cup, they did beat uh, Ibiza Islas Pitiusas by 4-1. to one, But they were down 1-0 at halftime. Uh, in the next match, uh, they beat uh, Rayo Vallecano by 2-1, to one, but, um, you know, they could have easily lost in that one. Um, and uh, one of their two goals was, was an actually a Rayo Vallecano own goal. And their third and final win in that span after the, the World Cup break um, came against Getafe on the road really anxiously with a, a penalty kick at the 86th minute. They're not winning easily. Uh, and all the other matches were uh, losses. Of course, they're coming off a 3-4 uh, loss at home against Delta Vigo. And Almeria, they've been... Ah, in better form after the break than Betis, to be honest. Yes, they did lose to Real Sociedad, but um, they were up against, you know, Real Sociedad were just a juggernaut uh, coming out of that uh, World Cup break. 
And uh, recently they lost to Rayo Vallecano on the road, but at home, this Almeria side has been really, really tough. Um, uh, overall, after the, the World Cup, they played six matches. Three of them were draws. And uh, I just don't see Betis winning this one, to be honest. I like to draw. Uh, plus 240, I think that's a nice price. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a 1-1 one -one draw, a 2-2 two -two draw, a goalless draw. So I'm not taking any part of the totals. Uh, I like the price on the draw. I think both teams would be very happy, uh, especially Almeria, uh, because they're going to remain afloat. They're going to remain unbeaten against a very good side. Uh, I think this is one of the best possible draws to, to go with uh, in this weekend. So I like the draw here, plus 240. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good number as well. It's not like it's 205 or it's plus 210. Uh, Roman, the vote from Greece is that we've got a 1-1 one, one draw here or we've just got a draw of any uh, any shape or size. Can you, uh, can you give any sort of encouragement if someone if wants to go for the money line because Almeria at home are a plus 190 and Batiste did score three last week even though they lost four well money line might be a bit riskier but I think uh, maybe a draw no but if that has any value that could be interesting because honestly I, I wouldn't be surprised at all as Pablo said if Betis draw or even lose this game because I mean they haven't been good they've been so irregular this season and to make matters worse they have three very important players suspended for this game with uh, Carvalho in the midfield. He's not going to be there. With Luis Felipe, who's one of the starting centre-backs, he's also suspended. He got sent off in the previous game. And then, of course, Fekir, who's suspended. And the fact that Fekir this season has had so many problems with injuries and not been playing uh, regularly, I think Betis have really felt that on the field. And we were seeing it in the results where they were, at the beginning of the season, really good uh, fighting for those Champions League positions. And now they've dropped down to the seventh spot and struggling a lot. So, uh, without him on the field, Betis are a bit weaker if, if possible and uh, I just feel like uh, anything could happen in this game and Almeria at home could be a dangerous team. Yeah, draw no bet is or pick them uh, is at plus 110 so I mean maybe that's the way to go if you don't see the home side getting beat can't trust Batiste and then on top of that they've got three important players all going to be missing this game so um, yeah the draw is at plus 230 let's have a little look at the official picks or official pick because it's Pavlos on the draw at plus 2.30. And that's because you can't trust the away side and the home side don't score enough goals. Uh, let's move on to game number two because I was quite surprised. I was on my own. I've got the pick here. Uh, it's Sevilla versus Mallorca. Sevilla at minus 115. I think it's just don't complicate it. You can definitely go with that. Mallorca at plus 3.95. But the goal line is set at two with the over two at plus 105. So anything over one goal, you're going to get an automatic push for plus money. The draw is at plus two. 220. Um, I just see goals and the number is too big to go over to because Sevilla could win this game 3-1. Mallorca, they do, they do like to hit on a counter-attack. But Sevilla, and this is Pavlos where I'm going to bring you in again, is because you've been on that Sevilla train. Now I've gone with goals expecting maybe Sevilla to win and potentially score the over two goals themselves at plus 150. Why have you not gone with them? Uh, I haven't gone with them because uh, they they beat me last week. Uh, of course, they were on the road and at home they're much, much uh, better, you know, more feisty, of course. Uh, they now get a Mallorca side. The only reason that I didn't get involved in this with this match is uh, because I see cards and a lot of them. Uh, both sides, uh, actually, they're, they're the two most card-friendly sides in the league. Mallorca with 3.7 cards uh, on average and Sevilla with 3.3 cards. Um, they're the, you know, the two top teams in cards. So, um, I was waiting to see uh, who the referee is because no matter how many teams, uh, no, no matter how many cards these teams get, if there is a, a, a referee refereeing this match that is not really easy with cards, I just won't bet it. Uh, I'd rather not bet it and it hits than bet it and it doesn't hit. So I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, yeah. I, I, choose to, I chose to stay away uh, eventually because uh, the, it's not a card friendly referee. Uh, and even though he's not a card friendly referee, he still has, uh, what, uh, four red cards in... Um, no, just one red card. Anyway, uh, I just found out about the referee uh, just five minutes ago. So um, I think there's going to be many cards and maybe a red card. It could be in the first half and it could destroy every single bet. Sides, totals, anything. So, uh, and Mallorca, you know, they're always very tight, very tight. So this is one of the matches where I wouldn't be surprised if either side scored one goal and then uh, turtle back to their own defense... Uh, put 11 men, 11 men behind the ball. So this is uh, just one of the trickier matches uh, of this week that I didn't want to get involved. 
and um, for me it was an insta pass. I did some research on the cards, but uh, that didn't turn out, uh, you know, uh, any good. So for me it's a big fat pass. Uh, good luck uh, with whatever you have. But uh, if I had to play, I'd play uh, the the man line for Sevilla, which was. Um, I believe it was minus 125-ish, and now it's gone up. Um, now it's that it's higher, I could be tempted, but no. Okay, Roman, I was thinking about, I've just typed it in as it goes, uh, Sevilla to score twice at plus 150, even because I think that they maybe win 2-0, two 2-1. Nil, two Being a little bit greedy because I've gone with the over two at plus 105 as well. Do you see Sevilla scoring twice? And do not start with, it's quite possible. I'm, I'd, I'd rather say it's quite unlikely, honestly. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, because I, I just, that then. <laughs> just honestly, um, last uh, Thursday we talked about the game and we were saying that Sevilla were going through some good results, but I said like I wasn't too convinced because some of these games were a bit tricky with the sending offs they'd had and slight advantage that had given them, and then they got thrust against Barca. Of course, this is not Mallorca, but Mallorca just drove Real Madrid to despair the other day and they played really good. They're a very tight defensive team. And we still know that Sevilla are struggling, still working their way through this rough moment. It's true they brought in new signings. I think uh, they have improved slightly, but there's still a long way to go because honestly, at the Camp Nou, uh, particularly, they didn't really show anything of that uh, quality that they brought in and in this uh, short uh, transfer window. So for me, it's, it's hard to say. I just can't trust uh, Sevilla yet. I think it's too soon. I have to wait and see a bit more whether something is, is really happening uh, positively for the team or if they're just uh, still... Um, in that uh, weird situation where anything can happen. And as I said, Mallorca just looked so solid the other day that uh, I wouldn't be surprised if somehow, as, as Pablo says, they got a, an early goal or a lucky goal and then they just put all their 11 guys behind to defend because Aguirre is a very defensive-minded manager. So, I mean, tricky one, so I decided to pass it. OK, yeah, draw half-time at minus 105 uh, from Barca man in the chat. And Orlando Brown saying draw half-time. Sevilla Mallorca have gone over two goals in the game at plus 105 just because it's the number. I, I see that I've just got to get over one goal in the game, uh, even though under two and a half goals is the uh, is the favourite. Or over Under two goals in the game is the favourite here at minus 125. Let's have a little look at the official picks. And I did not add in the end Sevilla team total over one and a half at plus 150. Just over two at plus 105. Move on to game number three because we've got chalk and cheese. Barcelona, two, uh, sorry, Valencia at plus 210. Playing Athletic Club at plus 140. Draw is at plus 225. The under or over is set at two and a half with the over being at plus 125. I can see why the over is a massive price, Roman. Um, I just don't want to be anything to do with Valencia. Home or away or neutral ground. It's Athletic Club. Money line, draw or pick them uh, or nothing. So for me, tell me why the, uh, the home side will have anybody interested in betting them. Well, uh, nobody, because they're just, as I always say, so unpredictable that uh, you just can't really trust them, especially now that they're going through this situation. Uh, they lost against uh, Girona the other day uh, without even scoring a goal. I mean, they're having um, a caretaker at the moment in Bodo, who we said the other day that uh, his eighth time he's going to be in charge uh, of Valencia. We don't know how long he's going to last. Valencia don't even know if they want to sign a new manager, if they want him to, to stay until the end of the season. Uh, the board or whoever's in charge, well, Peter Lim is in charge, but uh, whoever he has there handling the squad uh, are not even sure what to do. So, I mean, it's, it's a chaotic club, chaotic situation. Stay away from Valencia uh, because uh, it will probably drive you crazy, we could say. So, I mean, if you want to go somewhere, I guess uh, Athletic Club are the safer bet. Uh, uh, because also, let's not forget that uh, we always talk about how bad Valencia defend, but also they don't have uh, Gabriel Paulista, who's their best defender, because he was sent off uh, after kicking a Real Madrid player, uh, sorry, uh, recently. And also Guillamon, who's one of their defensive midfielders, uh, is also unavailable. So, I mean, seeing that their defense is going to be even weaker than usual, I just uh, cannot trust Valencia. And for me, it's a pass. Yeah, I like the I like, but not press the button, is Valencia not to score in this game at plus 180 because Athletic Club, unless they really cave in, they're very, very organised and tight at the back, Pavlos. Yes, yes, they are. And uh, to be honest, I just want to vent for like 15 seconds about last week because I had Zirona or Tai and uh, both them score. Uh, I got half of that correct because Zirona did win, but Valencia were really bad. Um, mm really bad they were not really bad but they were uh just uh, you know 
until they get some chemistry. But I didn't know about that background stuff that Roman said. I knew that they changed their coach, uh, but I didn't know about the chaos that uh, you know is um, happening right now. They don't know if they're gonna keep him, so that creates a lot of uncertainty to both the managers, the manager, and the players. So it's a really bad situation. And I remember Paco, uh, you know, uh, be, be, being very Crying. vivid about. Yeah, about uh, the you know the management of uh, Valencia, which is more than clear that it's uh, just really bad. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Valencia won here, to be honest, uh, because uh, you got you, yeah you know you got teams who are under pressure, and uh, at some point they're gonna get a win. Who knows? Maybe it's uh, because they played three three consecutive matches on the road against Valladolid, Real Madrid, and Girona. Another back at home. Uh, they generally do good at home. They do they don't really lose that easily. Uh, whenever they host Bilbao historically. However, they did lose uh, earlier in the season in the Copa del Rey. Actually, it was uh, a week ago in the in the Copa del Rey where they lost by 3-1. to one. So, uh, I'm guessing that Bilbao is the way to go here, but uh, a sneaky draw wouldn't surprise me. Uh, this is one of the matches where logic dictates that you should go with Bilbao, uh, but there is a high degree of an upset here. So, I'm personally staying away, but if I had to play something, uh, maybe the pick on Bilbao is the way to go. Yeah, I like Athletic Club. I like them at plus 140 just because uh, I'm fading. I'm fading so many teams across Europe this weekend, and uh, I'll continue to do it, even if I get beat. But a plus 140 for the away side to go and beat a side, who, a plus 180 to not score. I was tempted to go with that over the 140, and I've got the nil-nil on my side as well because... I think it, the draw half time, and they're saying Danny's saying that um, first half draw is, is a massive lean. But I think nil nil at half time means Athletic Club probably win this game one nil. But um, happy to take the plus one forty, but just because I think they're they're stronger, their spine is stronger, and also they're very stingy at the back as well against a side who don't score enough goals. Uh, Valencia are seven two and one in home in the corner match, yeah, because they huff and they puff, but they don't blow any houses down, Dan. So uh, let's have a little look at the official pick, and there it is, Atletico, uh, Athletic uh, money line at plus one forty, Athletic Club plus one forty on the money line. Okay, moving on, next game. Remember, we've got eight games. Hetafe versus Rayo Vallecano. It's really, it's a pick em, this. Plus 195 for the home side. Plus 190 uh, for Rayo. Means you've got to look straight at the bottom. And there is the draw at plus 175. I mean, the under over is at two. Are we looking, at, they're looking like nil-nil. But this game is one of them games where you're going to get loads of value if you go over two. Because the over two is at plus 125, uh, Roman. I think you've both got picks here. You've both gone against the numbers. But I think it's the right way to go. Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, uh, Rayo Vallecano, for example, on their, on their end, they're, they're doing really well lately. They're fifth in the standings at the moment, which is incredible. Just three points away from Champions League positions. I mean, uh, their manager, Iraola, is just... Uh, he's just works wonders with what he has because Rayo don't have the deepest of squads, but there he is, you know, with a very humble team fighting and, and getting very good results. And I think they're in a, a very good moment at, in the right now where I think they could get uh, positive results. And against a team like Getafe, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they score uh, one or two goals, even though it's an away game. And uh, on the other hand, Getafe are also under a lot of pressure because uh, Kike, Kike Sanchez Flores, he did get a positive 1-1 draw against Atletico de Madrid, but he is really uh, on the tight rope there. You know, they're 19th position just on top of Elche. They really need wins. And anything that isn't a win here, I think, could mean uh, that he'll end up leaving the club. So he, he really needs his team to score goals too, to go forward, uh, to be more aggressive. Because if they sit back and defend the whole game, that's not, not going to get them anywhere. Because a draw won't uh, be uh, enough, I think, for Setien. I for Setien, sorry, for Kike Sanchez Flores. So in that sense, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if we see over two goals. OK, would you be brave enough to go with the away side at plus 190, Pavlos, or the home side at plus 195? Mm. Uh, this is a tricky match. If I, again, if I had to play, I'd go with uh, Rayo Vallecano. Uh, Getafe okay. have been struggling um, a lot in the new season, uh, in the new year. I'm sorry, they only beat um, just the original side in the, in the Copa del Rey and only Mallorca. And then all the other matches were losses and uh, just one draw. Uh, against the Atletico Madrid, which was uh, just um, a special circumstances match. Uh, let's uh, leave it at that. So, uh, I believe, uh, you know, just a bit about my thought process. I go to the odds, okay, when the odds are out for this match day. And I look for 
um, the line set at two. Now, it's a usual occurrence in, uh, in the La Liga. So, uh, unless it's uh, Mallorca or Valladolid or Osasuna, I smash the over two. I, I, I mean, it's soccer, okay? And statistics say that if it's not Mallorca or Valladolid or uh, Osasuna who have an average of uh, um, uh, fewer than two goals, why not take the over two? I'm not, I don't get it. So, uh, in this match, I saw the, the over two was at plus 120, 125, plus 125. So, it's an instant play for me. It's an instant play for me, and for various reasons. Yes, of course, you're going to tell me that Hitafe, uh, they have, um, you know, many, many low-scoring matches. But uh, it, what happens? What's going to happen if Raja Vaikana scores the first goal? Are Hitafe going to sit back and say, "Okay, uh, let's minimize the loss"? No, they're going to go out and attack. And what's going to happen then? They are going to pull even, or uh, Raja Vaikana are going to hit them on the counter attack. So uh, there is no, literally, no reason to determine from picking the over two at this price. If the over two was like, I don't know, minus 110, minus 120, I'd have second thoughts. But at plus 125, I'm going to take the chance, man. And even if it doesn't work out, um, you know, betting is also fighting the value. So this is one of the matches that the value lies in taking the plus 125 on the over two. Yeah, 100% couldn't, couldn't agree more. Um, and Billy said, yeah, it's worth the push. I mean, even if yeah. there's only two goals in the game, you got plus 125 and it is a push. And when you're dealing with La Liga, you have got to start taking the numbers uh, rather than the, what you fancy. Because uh, like last week, over two goals in the Batiste and uh, Celta Vigo game. Seven. There were seven. Three times the amount of advertised goals. Let's have a little look at the official picks, please. I ran a mile. Uh, remember, remember the draw in this game is at plus 175. Plus, mm. which tells you it's a draw. Let's hope it's a 2-2 two -two draw. Uh, over two goals at plus 125 for both the lads. And they don't confer. They stick their, uh, their selections in at different times. But they both come up trumps. So basically two units on this show will be going on the over two at plus 125. OK, let's, uh, let's move on to this next game because... Whew, could be fireworks here. Celta Vigo plus 265 at home to Atletico Madrid and who are plus 120. Celta Vigo scored four last week. Remember the advertised goals was two and they doubled that just on their own and they came from behind uh, as well. The draw is at plus 215. Atletico to score twice is plus 155. Oh, let's see. Uh, let me have a little look at my sheet. And my sheet says that Roman, this is your selection and you fancy that the under or over two is the way to go again? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping uh, that result uh, the other day that Celta Vigo had was, was a breakthrough for them because there's been so many games where they've uh, been, had the chances, they've been going forward, they've been generating, but they've just been lacking uh, someone to finish those opportunities. And I'm hoping that after that uh, big result against Betis, those four goals, uh, this will maybe help allow them to be more comfortable towards goal and, and make better decisions in that sense. And also, in the past, uh, the games against Atletico Madrid have been uh, relatively high-scoring games, quite a few of them. We do know Atletico to be a very defensive side, but I think it's not the Atletico from years back. You know, I think Atletico now are more vulnerable, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if we get a, at least two goals I see in this game, at the very least. So I think it's a push, and um, Celta Vigo have uh, basically all, most of their uh, players available. They also have a new goalkeeper. They just signed Diego Alves, who we know that used to play back in the days for Valencia and Almeria uh, because uh, Marquesin got injured for long term, so they needed, they were allowed to, to get a new player. So we'll have to see how he... Uh, adapts or readapts back to La Liga after such a long time. He's 37 now. It'll be interesting to see what level he is. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping that uh, we see goals in, in this one, definitely. Do you see both teams scoring, Pavlos? Honestly, I don't know, to be honest. Yeah, you guys, listen, there's multiple ways to look at this match. It's a double edged sword. Uh, you call it what you will, but this is, uh, again, one of, one of the perspectives you can say. Uh, you can say, okay, Celta Vigo, what did they do in their last match? Oh, they beat uh, Betis by 4 to 3 on the road. They must be good. What did they do before that? Oh, they beat me Bao by 1 to 0. Oh, okay, I'm going to take uh, some kind of Celta on the pick em. Then Atletico Madrid win. If you look at the other way, I'm going to fade Atletico Madrid because they had a draw against Getafe. Uh, they struggled to beat Osasuna. They had a draw against Almeria, you know, earlier in January. Uh, you're going to fade um, Atletico Madrid and then something happens. This I, I don't want anything to do with these teams. Uh, I believe that Celta will not win the third consecutive match, even if it was against uh, Elche. Uh, now, if they win three uh, back to back to back, 
Bilbao and uh, Betis and Atletico Madrid, fine by me. Kudos to them. I'll I'll eat my hat and I'll stop talking about them. But I'm not. I don't think this is going to happen. Now, with that in mind, do we go for the draw? Do we go for the money line? Maybe if you look at Atletico Madrid money line, yes, it's a nice price. But do you really have the guts to pick Atletico Madrid on the road? where they've uh, not been very good this season. Pavlos, do you have the guts Davico... to take Atletico Madrid at home? Uh, a bit easier than I am on the road. To be honest, I keep betting on some, uh, maybe both teams scores or both teams score or like, something like that. To be honest, I haven't touched on Atletico Madrid in quite a while because uh, I I don't, I can't, uh, you know, get the feel of that team this season. Because they've lost uh, their whatever identity. I bet, Yes, of course. I mean, uh, both them and Sevilla, we used to bet on the unders or Atletico to win uh, an under three and a half, an under two and a half. And the same with Sevilla. This season is just no. And they, uh, Atletico Madrid showed very warning signs from last season as well, where they were struggling defensively. So um, I don't know. This is one of the matches where could be a goalless draw, could be a 3 0 win for Atletico Madrid, a 2 win, a 2 0 win for Celta Vigo. Big fat pass from me. Uh, I won't even watch it on TV, to be honest. <laughs> OK, well, I'll have to watch it, otherwise yeah. I won't know what I'm talking about. Uh, let's have a little look at the official picks, because obviously it's Roman that's got the pick here. And again, when the goal line is set at two, you've got to go over. Uh, minus 120, and if you don't go over two, then you just take the draw at like double the, uh, double the odds. Um, let's have a uh, little move on to the next game, because I thought that this was another game where I was expecting the goal line to be around two. It is Valladolid against Osasuna. The draw is at plus 205. I'm not sure I see both teams scoring in this game, so both teams to score, no. Uh, Valladolid are plus 185, Osasuna at plus 170. The uh, under or over, obviously at two, but it's one, minus 120 on the over. I thought that this was an under two at plus 100. You can go again, Roman, because again, this is a game where you've uh, you've played the numbers. Yeah, uh, and honestly, I'm just loving Bayelid uh, since uh, two games ago. You know, the new signings, I think, have really brought a boost to this team. Uh, we, we mentioned it with Pablo, who were very happy with the players they brought in that look good, and, and they're honestly performing uh, to the expectations or, or even better, we could say. Uh, they got a massive win against Real Sociedad. I think that really has to uh, give the team the, the energy to go ahead and, and keep believing in themselves. They're going to play now a home game uh, with the fans, fans that are going to cheer them up because they're very happy about the uh, last two results. We know that Bayonet can play well because we saw it before, before the World Cup where they had a good uh, streak of results. And I think they might be finding that form uh, once again, and I want to kind of like trust them here. I mean, it could perfectly be a draw because we know Sasuna is a rocky side and, and they are also a strong team. But honestly, I think the uh, something favors Bayelid here for me and I just uh, feel like uh, I can kind of trust them. Yeah, I, well, I mean, yeah, I, I can trust them, especially if you're going like with the PK at minus 105 because I don't see Osasuna scoring here, Pavlos. So the plus 180 looks massive. In fact, the plus 180 is just nearly as big as the draw in the game at plus 205. Well, you guys make some great, really great points. And uh, I was looking at the XG numbers for Valladolid. Uh, they had 0 0.78, uh, which is not great, not terrible. Uh, against Real Sociedad, they won. Uh, 1.47 against Valencia, they won. And uh, all the other matches prior to the January signings, they struggled to go over half. Uh, 0 0.5 ex expected goal. So um, they, they in matches against Valencia and Real Sociedad, okay, Valencia were struggling and are still struggling, but against Real Sociedad, uh, creating 0 0.78 might not look like much, but against this this defense and especially um, on the road against Real Sociedad, uh, it's nice. It's nice to see them uh, doing that. But Osasuna are a very tricky side. They can come out of nowhere and um, at least hold out for a draw. So. This is one of the matches where I do see a draw. Uh, I don't want to get involved because I love to see what Valladolid can do with the new signings, but I'm uh, scared slash uh, respectful of uh, what Osasuna are able to do on the road. Uh, this season, uh, it's not very visible, but yes, they have only lost three of their 10 away matches, two wins, five draws. Uh, but last season, I believe they, they were really good on the road. I mean, they, they, uh, they remained unbeaten or even beat big teams on the road so uh that goes a lot you know it goes a lot uh, to say about how they approach things and how they're not afraid in big venues and stuff like that now 
Against Real Valladolid, I'm not sure. This is a very tricky match. I think this is an under. I think this is because, as I said before, whenever I see the totals, um, I, I smash the over. But now these are two of the teams that are have a huge tendency towards the under. So maybe the under two goals uh, is actually a really nice bet, to be honest. But uh, I'm staying away. I'm taking it very, very carefully this is, this uh, this week. But if I had to play this, uh, it would be the under two for me. Yeah, it's both teams to score no. And you've got plus 175 for the home side to draw a blank. Osasuna at plus 180 to draw a blank. But you've got plus 100, which seems like a push. Because do I rely on, do I, can I, not do I, can I rely on one of these sides to win and score free? I don't think I can. Let's have a little look oh, oh. at the official picks. It's been a really tough card so far, to be honest. Valadolid, uh, PK at minus 105, which is the same as draw no bet, obviously, because it's pick them. Uh, you've got to pick either a winner or, uh, well, just basically you've got to pick a winner uh, at minus 105. Uh, let's move on to the next game because now we're starting to get a little bit of meat on the bone because Villarreal a plus 335 for a reason because they are shocking. Barcelona minus 130. A lot of people are just say, well, listen, I'm happy to go with Barcelona. About the one of the only two or three sides in the whole of La Liga that I can actually put my hat on. Uh, the draw is at plus 295. The problem I have here is Villarreal beat Real Madrid a few weeks ago. Obviously, they had a little bit of help with uh, penalties. Under two and a half goals in this game is at minus 115. Roman, you're obviously the closest person to Barcelona. They have no fear going to Villarreal in this instance. So, and then minus 135 to score twice. They score twice, they win because Villarreal are disjointed. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, uh, we have a team that looks really good and a team that doesn't look good at all. So, I mean, uh, in that sense, it's not too difficult to make a choice, I guess. Uh, Barcelona at the moment are really strong and also um, let's keep in mind Barca tend to do very 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 well against Villarreal I think already in the last 27 games uh, Villarreal have only beaten Barca once uh, I mean it's a team that they tend to uh, do well because also because of the style of, of, of Villarreal which is quite um, they like to go forward they like to try and have their opportunities to, to be quite aggressive but that obviously backfires a lot when you play against a team like Barcelona that has so much quality that presses very high steals the ball very quickly and now that Barca are really going through a good moment, then I think that that's going to make it even tougher for Villarreal. Also, let's not forget, uh, Barca have always done really well against Kike Setien's teams. Kike Setien has only beat Barca once. That was a 4-3 at the Camp Nou when he was at Betis, but the other six or seven games, uh, six games he played uh, against Barca, he lost. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I think all the ingredients uh, kind of uh, lead to a Barca win, in my opinion, here. Um, also, the change in formation Barca has made recently with four midfielders has worked very, very well. Uh, where they have more control, more ball possession. Pedri and Gabi uh, finding more spaces in the middle to to attack and to generate opportunities as well as, of course, uh, Lewandowski. Despite Dembele, who's not there, we saw the other day against Sevilla how Barca were, were constantly a threat. And Rafinha did did pretty well in the second half despite struggling a bit during the game, but he manages to get his goals and assists. And the only maybe setback here is that, of course, aside from Dembele, uh, Busquets is also injured and he's been important in that midfield of four, but still... Uh, also, for, sorry, before I forget, uh, Gerard Moreno is doubtful for this game. And we know that how he important he is for Villarreal. If he is not there, they don't really have a, a backup option because Nico Jackson, who's the other uh, some striker, he's also injured. He was about to leave the Premier League, but he didn't in the end because of that injury. Uh, Lo Celso, who's maybe a more um, forward-going uh, midfielder, he's also injured. And they basically just have Chukwese, Jeremy, because Danjuma was sold to Tottenham. So there's not many options there, you know. Villarreal wanted a backup striker. They didn't get it. And now if Moreno misses again... I just think it makes it even tougher for Villarreal. So for me, this is a pretty clear Barca win unless something uh, out of the norm happens. Yeah, there was there was a few ways. I went deep into this game and this is what I came up with. Villarreal like to play a diamond in midfield, which means you've got one holding midfielder sitting, normally Capu, sitting in front of a back four. The back four will then be isolated with one-on-one -on -one situations and they're not great defenders. You've then got two Barcelona midfielders that are going to have maybe 10 or 15 yards of space to pick off the uh, Villarreal players. I looked here and went, OK, I'm getting minus 130 for Barcelona. I'm getting minus 135 for Barcelona to score twice. I think Barcelona scored twice. Barcelona to win an over one and a half goals, Pavlos, is plus 130. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? Barcelona win the game. Uh 
they're, they're going to score twice. Yeah. Uh, well, following that uh, line of uh, thought, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the odds, the, the odds, yeah, the odds align, so you can take a match, you know, it, both things that you thought of, uh, and you put them in the same game parlay, uh, which I love, uh, for a nice price. Yes. Uh, I'm not so sure what to make of this VRL side, to be honest. Uh, one rule of thumb is fade them when they're on the road. Um, maybe uh, back them up when they're at home. Now, Barcelona, they're good no matter where they play. And um, this is a tricky match, guys. This is a tricky match. And the, uh, to be honest, I initially uh, tried to make a bet on the uh, first half under one, which is at plus 125. And there's a reason for that, because VRL... Um, they have two wins, four draws, and three losses in first halves at home, scoring just four and conceding four in the process. So, in nine home matches, there's been eight first half goals. That's fewer than one goal per first half at home for Villarreal, uh, both by them and their opponents. Now, uh, Barcelona in first halves on the road, they have three wins, five draws, and two losses. They've scored five and conceded uh, four. So, that's nine goals, first half goals on the road for Barcelona in 10 matches. So, these two combined, they give you an under a safe option of the under one goal in the first half. And then I said, okay, what did they do earlier in the season? I see Barcelona beaten by three to nil, scored, scored all three goals in the first half. Uh, but it was a tricky match because, first of all, it was at Barcelona and the stats are totally different. And um, VRL were missing Gerard Moreno, Lo Celso, uh, Foyt. They were missing a whole lot of players in that match. Um, this, I think this is going to be a tight first half, to be honest. But... This is one of the matches where I uh, I initially wanted to add the first half under, but I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, again, if I had to play something in this match, it would be the first half under one, uh, plus 125, because it, in my eyes, it looks a bit safe. Uh, worst case scenario, it's a push. But I'm going to stay away. Villarreal got uh, ripped last week by Elche. Yeah, exactly. So, But it was on the road. It was on the road. When they play at home, they're better. They're way better at home than they are on the road. But, uh, yeah, losing to, to bottom feeders Elche by 3-1 to one, uh, might have hurt uh, their egos. So, I'm not sure if they're softies and they're going to be destroyed by Barcelona or if they're going to, you know, man up and uh, uh, all band together and, uh, you know, take anything from this match. So, tricky match, uh, pass for me. Well, I thought I was being clever last week by going with Elche and Villarreal, draw half-time. And I got done with an injury time goal to make it yeah. LG2, Villarreal 1. It was just, yeah. I'm, I'm not, listen, I agree with Billy Franklin in the chat who says, I don't recognise this Villarreal side. Everyone knows that I've always liked the yellow submarine. I was hopeful because they put half a performance in against Real Madrid. And then what I watched closely was Barcelona are going to score twice and, I, and Villarreal have not got Moreno. Villarreal might not score in this game and you might have a little saver at plus 180. Let's have a little look at the... Uh, Official uh, picks, please. Uh, sorry, I was just reading uh, someone there. I don't really get that TS life. Uh, Barcelona and over one and a half for myself and from the kid from Barcelona at plus one thirty. Jog on to the last game, and I think you've been on. I've been you've been visiting the brewery here. Yeah. This is Pavlos's game. Uh, Real Madrid at minus <laughs> five fifty. Elche at plus thirteen hundred. Um, Elche at plus two, at minus 105. And then Real Madrid, to, that means Real Madrid have got to score three and Elche not reply for him to get at least a push. Team total of Elche scoring is plus 115. So the way to look at this, Pavlos, is the draw at plus 650 is redundant. Let's throw that in the bin. Real Madrid probably win the game. But we were saying last week, we, can we trust Real Madrid to score three? Which means, obviously, then Elche's a push. Uh, and are we not better off going with Elche to score at plus 115 rather than maybe Elche plus 2 at minus 105? Uh, for whatever reason, maybe. Uh, because, you know, Real Madrid are playing in the, uh, what is it now? Uh, Morocco for the Club World Cup. Yeah. So that's an extra... That, that, mm -hmm. I can't believe how they're tearing this sport apart, man. Because, you know, they already cut the season in half to do the World Cup. Yes, okay, yes. everything's fancy, blah, blah, blah. So now after they return from that, uh, which really destroyed their regime, their, their training regime, their, um, you know, everything that they, these players 
are machines, okay? They're, they're used to very specific conditions. They train in the summer, then they go, uh, you know, for a... For you know, for uh, recuperation, and then they start the season, which they know it's gonna last that long. So they're trained; they've been training their bodies for their entire lives to specific conditions. And since the pandemic hit, since the pandemic hit back, back in 2020, this flow was interrupted. So in the first couple of seasons uh, after that, the pandemic, we saw very weird uh, results: players getting injured and stuff like that. But when they're starting to you know, turn back to normal with normal regimes and normal, you know, training schedule and all that stuff. The World Cup happens and cuts their season in half. And after that, they now have to cut their season in half again and go to Morocco to play two meaningless matches just for money. I'm, I'm won't, I won't get into that uh, a lot, but the, the reason why, one of the reasons why I picked Elche is the fact that Real Madrid will have to travel back and forth to Morocco. Yes, it's not a big uh, trip, but still. Uh, there's two extra matches and extra fatigue that he didn't really need. And uh, Elche, don't look now and uh, take the, the reverse fixture uh, with a grain of salt. They lost 3-0 to to Real Madrid and Real had like five disallowed goals in that match. But traditionally, in the last six matches, they don't lose easily. Last season, they had a, um, a draw and a, and a loss by one goal uh, in the league and a goalless draw in the Copa del Rey. The season before that, they lost by one goal and then they held Real Madrid to a draw. So... I'm not so sure what the, the extra fatigue is going to do to the Real Madrid players. Uh, Elche are fighting for their lives right now. Uh, they've grabbed uh, five points in the last four matches. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they somehow grinded a result like a nil-nil or a, a one-nil loss, a two-nil loss at worst. So I'm buying three results. I'm buying Elche to win uh, the draw, uh, Elche to lose by one, and the safety of Elche to lose by two goals. I, I'm bets. all in for that. I'm thinking, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm thinking. That. Four bets. I'll tell you what, Mitch has made a statement that, Mitch, I know that you know the time of day. You have gone right out on a limb because you've gone with Real Madrid minus two and a half at plus 151. Now, I know the number's big, but when Real Madrid have got to score three after coming back from travelling around the world, it's like unbelievable. Uh, Roman, you're not, listen, you're not Real Madrid at the best of times when they're absolutely flying and the best team ever. But, Elche, do they score at plus one one five? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a possibility. Yes, easily. Yeah, it could happen. Uh, the only sad thing maybe for Elche is that the guy who scored the hat trick uh, against Villarreal the other day, he got injured that same game, and he's going to be out for a couple of months. So I mean, they're not going to have him available, and he would that would have definitely uh, given them a lot of help in that uh, goal scoring aspect. Could they score? Yes, uh, but honestly, what I do see is if in Madrid win, it will probably be a very short result. I don't think it's going to be more than a 2-0, 2-1, something like that. You, you see, I don't think Madrid are going to come here uh, and scoring goals. Also, Vinicius is suspended for this match and he tends to play better at home because we've seen how away from the, from the Bernabeu he, he easily uh, loses concentration, starts complaining to the referees, uh, talking to opponents and his mind just goes elsewhere and doesn't really perform as well as he does at home, so uh, big miss, of course, because we saw Benitez the other day in this uh, previous game, sorry, from the uh, World Cup, FIFA World Cup for clubs, uh, where he had a really good game, he scored a goal, he was shining there, and I think that could have, maybe he could have kept up that momentum, but of course, not having him is, is a bit of a setback, and we'll have to see if Courtois is also available, because he, he hasn't played uh, these last few games in the, sorry, well, the last game, sorry, in the FIFA uh, Club World Cup. But aside from that, I think Madrid should be capable of getting a win, but I, I don't see them getting a big win and I just can't really say 100% that uh, Elche would score you know there is a possibility of course because Madrid are going through this uh, bad streak we could say where they're really struggling to get uh, the results they need but I mean it is still risky to to trust Elche too much yeah I mean it is one of those where we're actually talking about Madrid and can we trust them I mean Mitch has gone completely bonkers and saying that Madrid score four I'm not sure because they normally they just take their foot off the gas when they get to one or two okay let's have a little look at the official pick and then we'll have a look at all the picks uh LJ plus two at minus 105 so you've got to get beat by three to not get a push but as you say you've got four angles covered you get a push if they get beat by two yep. you win if they get beat by one you win if they draw and you win obviously if they win state in the obvious uh okay uh ts live saying first half lj to score or nil nil draw so maybe you're getting plus one lj 
uh, in the first half as well. Maybe that's the way to go if Real Madrid uh, have got a little bit of lead in their legs after they're travelling. And remember, they're not at full strength either. So maybe that's the way to go. Elche plus one in the first half. OK, time for a Q&A. So if there is any questions after the 64 million games we've done this week, uh, I'll be very, very shocked. But I'd also be very shocked if you don't subscribe and also if you ring the bell, we'll notify you and you'll never miss any content again. And that means La Liga, Serie A, Bundesliga, which will be tomorrow with Kevin and Alex. And by the way, over 30 units of profit there. And we had a banker parlay last week and the Premier League, which is a little bit tougher. And then it's Champions League and Europa League as well. If you're on social Pablo media... Right. On a I, US TV. <laughs> what do you mean? What's going on? I, I you got, you got a question from Cadiz. I told you somebody's <laughs> going to ask about Cadiz. Yeah, that's Mitch. He thinks he's funny. Mitch is my mate. He's my friend. We chat daily on other sports because that's what we do. Why would you want to be getting involved in Cadiz, Mitch? Uh, right, Roman. <laughs> Roman, talk to me about Cadiz. I, I don't want to get involved. See, Pablo, that's good Sigo. enough. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Mitch, Mitch is in the chat. We're all going to be reading it. Mitch, why do you want to know about Cadiff? Uh, Cadiff, draw double chance, or Cadiff, sorry, draw no bet? Cadiff, uh, Pavlos, a plus 116 with a draw no bet. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm more inclined towards, uh, you know, Cadiff than I am on Girona. Um, but this is one of the matches where I said, okay, draw. the line is set at 2.25. I would be skeptical if it was at 2. Uh, no, no, that's, that's for me. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you can take a same game parlay of uh, Cadiz or tie and over or under something because that will get you paid in the event of a tie. Well, yeah. the pick em won't get you paid, will get you a push. So maybe uh, Cadiz or tie and uh, let's see now, over one and a half or under one and a half? Or, what about, or under what about both teams to score? Both teams to score? Yeah. Uh, no. Maybe, so but both teams no. to score no then. Uh, that's why it's crazy the game is. Draw and then you say, what was I thinking? Why did I bet both teams yeah. score in Cadiz yeah. versus Girona? <laughs> I like crazy? the fact you've said, I love the fact you've said, what am I thinking? Because that's what I'm going to aim at Mitch, because we've just done eight of the ten games and we've left the two games out for a reason. And it's almost like we've given you, we've served you up 95 dishes, but you want something different. Uh, OK, <laughs> let's have a little look at uh, all the official picks, please. OK, Pavlos gone for Almeria and Batiste. Draw plus 230, great price. Hatafe Reo over two goals at plus 125, big price. Uh, Roman's gone for uh, that as well at plus 125. Celta Vigo and Atletico uh, over two goals at minus 120. Valladolid, Pickham at minus 105. And Barcelona and over one and a half Plus 130 for Roman and myself. I've gone for Athletic Club. Money line at plus 140. Not because I like Athletic Club, but I don't like Valencia, who they're playing. LJ plus two at minus 105 for Pavlos. And for me at the top, Sevilla, Mallorca. Over two at plus 105 in the game. I think Sevilla get that on their own. From everybody in the chat, really appreciate everything. Please thumbs up on the way out. If you haven't subscribed, then please do so. Pavlos, have a great weekend. Uh... Roman, come on, Barcelona. They get two goals. We're going to get that plus 130. I was so close to making it a banker. We'll see you all tomorrow with the Bundesliga, with Kevin and Alex and myself. You take care.